it's still all illegal. Keep in mind, keep this in mind, people. I still have the vest, the hard hat, and I've got a drill called a, called a hammer drill. And that's powerful enough to go through concrete, okay? You can go out, it makes a lot of noise, but guess what? No one questioned us still. People still thought we were doing our jobs, which we were, but just not legally, you know? We're doing our jobs in a way. And also keeping in mind context. I talk, taught my students this before, context, meaning that the place that you put your art is just as important, if not more important, than the art you put there, you see? Because what do you have here? You have a snake made out of, out of chain, right? Why does it make sense there? Because usually you see, at least in New York, you always see chains on these bike locks because someone got their bike stolen. That's usually how it goes. Now I thought, well, why don't I put a little imagination into this and make something look like it came alive, you know? Just a little imagination, playing with what is there and making it be become more animate, more accessible, you see? I also, you know, again, the, all the techniques that I learned in school, in high school, remember the art school that I told you about where I learned all the traditional Van Goghs, Picassos, all these kinds of things? It came back to me again. I forgot about it for a while, it came back to me as a street artist. But instead of what, painting on a canvas and putting it on a blank wall, I'm welding in steel and putting it, installing it, drilling it onto uh, brick walls, you see. So all this is coming back to me. This is kind of a renaissance, essentially, personal renaissance, essentially, for me. Because I'm changing every, every day, it seems like I'm making a new work. And when I am painting with oils, traditionally, I'm using it in a different context, you see here. This is a self-portrait, okay? If you were in this phone booth in Brooklyn, New York, you happen to use the phone, put your quarter in, and you look up at the sign, and you were observant, you would see that, wait a minute, that fence right there in this picture looks a little bit like this fence here. And then you'd say, wait a minute, that pole is that same pole there. You turn around, and that garbage can is, is there. That advertisement is there. The only thing that's different, the only thing that's not there uh, is you. And it's just, it's me looking up at you, saying hello. That's my version of a self-portrait. That's a, that's a self-portrait in context, in the context of the street. And like I said, the street is, is my playground. That's where I work best, I believe. So this is my uh, adaptation on traditional painting. And also traditional landscape painting, you know, which they all teach us. We, I understand that landscape painting is the most uh, pleasant for people who don't you do art. So I thought, I, why don't I try to do a landscape, you know? But let's, put, let's keep it real, folks, all right? This is, have you seen The Wizard of Oz? You guys know that story? What do I use here? The Yellow Brick Road, right? And traditionally, what? Oz is a, a magic city. The Yellow Brick Road tra trans, you know, forms you, and it, it, it makes you travel to the Emerald City, where everything is perfect, right? Quality of life is high. No one dies. Nothing, no crime happens. Well, this is in Brooklyn, New York City. It's the furthest from Oz that you can think of. So I thought I would put the Yellow Brick Road going to the housing projects where no one really wants to go, unless you, know, unless you live there or you want to buy something. So you know, it's just, it's not the place that you, you, that you want to go. So I, I made a, a, con, a, a contextual shift here, you see? And this is actually still there. This is from 2001. This was actually installed a week before the, the World Trade Center uh, was destroyed. That's been there a while. And I also began to look at myself as artist as provider. You guys have been to New York City or are familiar with it. What does New York City not have a lot of? It's got a lot of, you know, buildings, cars, people. What does it not have a lot, a lot of? Trees. Nature. Nature. So why don't I just go to the most industrial looking place I can and provide New York City with what it does not have a lot of? Even if people look at it for one second, and say, and look, and, and they're transported to another place. This is what I tried to do. All as Darius Jones, all as the illegal street artist. And also I began to play around with, 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 with uh, size and scale. This is a work that I did as verbs. It's a Van Gogh, it's obviously influenced by Van, Vincent Van Gogh. It's still there, by the way. What I did as Darius Jones is I came back, made a, a mini me version of it, a scaled version, and put it right next to it. That's me there. So I made a little baby version of it, right? And that idea was, was, was furthered uh, a couple years, about a year or two later, with a baby stop sign, myself and Brad did, you see? 
So what I'm doing here is just, I've taken what's already there and immediately changed the way you look at that. The most common street sign ever, probably. It made you look at it as a parent, you know, as, as, a, as a guardian, as an adult. And now it made you look at this as like an infant. I mean, making it seem as if these have a, this has a life stage, you know, a lifespan. So what does that do? That makes you look at uh, that makes you look at these things as living objects, by a very small uh, a very small addition, you know. And also, you know, with context, this is a very important word that I use all the time. I'm going to be using it in my teaching uh, lesson. So context is everything with with public art. Now you see this neighborhood here. There's a lot of basketball going on here. This is a place called the West Fourth Courts in Manhattan. Everybody plays basketball here. There's all kinds of movies that, that go on here. What do you think I added to this? What, where, where is my art? Does anybody have, have an idea where, yes? What? Dunking. No, dunking. Do you, know, you guys know what dunking is? Yeah. When you hang on the rim, just, just visibly and obviously just slam on it, right? So I thought it would be funny. Um, by the way, this is on a, a, a pole that has a no parking sign there, right? So I thought, well, if you can't park there, and you happen to have a basketball, which you probably do, you can't dunk there either. You know, you can shoot all you want. That was my idea of a joke. Now, I was explaining earlier that you, if you, when you go out and put your public art there, art out there, you have to be prepared for people to do anything. So what did somebody do? They dunked on it, right? And they, did, you know, they, they slammed it all up, and nobody can shoot on it anymore. I think it's actually kind of funny. But I had to be prepared for, you know, as, as a street artist, I had to be prepared for, um, you know, people to do things like that. So this is what I'm thinking about, you know, in terms of context. And also history, in American history, you know, we all know in the United States is divided by race strictly. It's getting better now, but it was for a long time divided by race. They had a set of laws called the Jim Crow laws in the South, where blacks and whites could not use the same drinking fountain the same movie theater, the same uh, bathrooms, so and so. So what I did was this. I took a phone sign that used to say Verizon on it. I put white only on one side of it, and on the very next side, colored only. All right, so it's a contradiction in a way. It depends on what side of the phone you're, you're on. Now, assuming this is like, this is real and the law and, and the government put this up, how would it be possible to actually use the phone? Legal. You couldn't, unless you're black on one half and white on the other. Maybe Barack Obama could use it. I don't know. Okay. So this is now, you know, to bring it back to a personal level, we'll put it like this. Remember I told you I fell in love, right? And that completely changed the way I looked at things. And that actually jump-started the whole Darius Jones personal revolution for me, right? I was in love and I saw the world completely differently. That ended by her doing she broke up with me, all right? So I had all these feelings again. And what better way to express it than out on the street? I had to do something, you know? I had to let these feelings go in, in a medium. And that's what the blessing of street art was for me because I didn't have to ask anyone's permission. It just came out and people could see what I was feeling. This is a representation of me. This is a male figure and the female figure running up away from me as far away as possible. Uh, up a flight of stairs here. And that's what it did for me. Street art let me express my personal feelings, and as Darius Jones, I was able to express my personal feelings completely. Because what would a verbs have done in this situation? Verbs was just concerned with writing verbs, right? And that's all, that's all it would be, you see? So that's to show you my, my progression in a way. But I also never forgot what it felt like to be in love, and, and that's why, you know, in this piece here, which I call it's all right, you have a little bit of tenderness going on, right? You have a little tenderness, there's some heartbreak before, but you have some tenderness as well. 